Chapman, where you're comfortable, uh, you know, it's, you can practice in any lane. It just says professional engineering. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you want to stay kind of in an area that you're specializing in, you researched, you're, you're uh, competent in. When you get the stamp, you feel like you don't want to use it unless you're sure that you know what you're talking about. Is when I got my stamp, like, that's how I felt. I'm like, yeah, I'm only going to stamp this if I'm 100%, you know, confident in that I know what I'm talking about for this particular design. Yeah. You feel that way. It's like a, it's like a responsibility. Right, right. You know? Can you show it? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, Just so this is the... Motivate our audience. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so this is the, um, the horror stamp, and then... It has the, like my seal on the inside. Awesome. So I went through and I just solved as many as I could, like very quickly in those first 90 minutes. Mm. So the goal was to solve as many really, really easy ones, like ones that I can just solve in half, the, like three minutes. If I couldn't solve it, like right away, I just flagged it, even if I knew the solution. Okay. Because my goal and my strategy was, I want to see all the problems. Right. And then solve the easy ones along the way. So that's what I did. Trust the journey. Trust the process. Trust the... You, acknowledge you're on a journey. Mm. Acknowledge that this is a journey. That this is a... It's a process. Because whatever you go through, whether good or bad, if you acknowledge that it's part of the journey to your goal, then then it will help you deal with all the ups and downs that come with it. Andre, uh, welcome back to our channel. It is really great, great to see you again uh, here. I remember when you when we first talked, you were trying to pass your FE exam, but then I still remember you were asking me about the PE and when can I pass my PE? You were so focused on that. And so um, I'm really excited to do this with you today and I can't wait to sh to uh, hear your PE journey. Thank you for, for coming back to our channel. I absolutely, pleasure to be here. Great to be here for this interview, the PE interview, like I said, um, I think it's a, probably a, a dream of your of your students to do the FE interview and hopefully come back for the PE one. So I'm glad to be here. Awesome, awesome. Okay, uh, Andre, can you remind us when did you pass your FE exam and then when did you start your studying for the PE? Did you take some time off or did you start preparing right away? Yeah, so I passed that my FE in June of. 2023 and I from there I took a yeah I did take a break I, I probably took a break until about September of 2023 and then from September I started to um, I scheduled the PE because I wanted the date to work towards. So I scheduled the PE in February of 2024. So from September to like February, I had a little vacation that we took with the family in between there. But uh, outside of that, from there, I was pretty much studying and I kept a, a, a similar regiment as with the FE. And then I took the PE in, in February. Okay. Now, did you have to submit anything to the NCS before you could take your exam? Oh, yes. Can you walk us through that a little bit? <laughs> I forgot about it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yes. So, as soon as I passed the FE, because, uh, you know, Kenza, I'm like, I, that was my goal was to just get to right. that PE point, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. so, it was like, as soon as I passed the FE, I did everything. I got the e EIT. I would I I was preparing my application before I even took the FE. Like mm -hmm. I had started preparing the, the the application because that was kind of part of my motivation. It's like almost like you're just willing it into existence, <laughs> you know, just willing like yeah. okay, I'm preparing for the PE, so I have to pass the FE. Mm. So I started, you know, preparing for it because I just wanted it to I wanted it to materialize so bad. So um, I started preparing for the PE, so I started getting my, collecting my references. Um, I had to have five character references 
um, for the uh, in, uh, in Maryland. So in Maryland, the application have to have five character references. Three of those have to be PEs. Mm. Um, and then you have to demonstrate. I had to demonstrate, I think it was eight years of practice under a PE because my degree, the degree that I had mm. was an engineering technology degree and not just a straight engineering. Mm -hmm. I didn't even pay attention to that until I went and, 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 the, and the, the representative from the Maryland board said, well, because of the type of degree you have, Ooh. you have to demonstrate eight years. So I, I was like, oh man. So that was, so I, I um, <laughs> just started writing everything up. And then, um, and then the, from there, I just had to get an endorser, a PE to endorse it. Mm -hmm. And so I just used, I used one of the uh, PEs from, uh, that I've been working with in my organization, you know, okay. to endorse my experience. And then I submitted that with my, the degree, uh, tr the transcripts, the five, the character references with three PEs. And then they took some time to review it. And, um, and then once I passed the FE, well, I didn't submit it. I had to take the FE first. And then once I passed the FE, that was kind of like the last step in the application. And then I submitted the whole application to the Maryland board. And then I got approved um, to the Maryland board to schedule the PE exam. Interesting. So you could not have taken the exam until you get in, until your application gets approved. Yes. Is that correct? Okay. Because every the application had to be approved. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so for the eight years experience, so you had to write down what you did during those eight years. Is that what you did? Yes. In the, okay. Did you remember most of it? Like, we, <laughs> did you prepare beforehand? <laughs> would, and then also, what do you recommend for those who just starting their careers and eventually they're going to start preparing for their PE? Would you recommend to them so that they make this whole process easier? Because I'm sure you probably struggled remembering everything that you've done the last eight years. Yes. So I, that part for me was easier than it seems because of the, the type of job that I have. Um, there are certain certifications that I have um, on the federal side because I'm a, I'm a federal employee, right? Okay. So there's certain certifications that I have to keep up to date and mm -hmm. you have to use your experience to apply for like upper levels. So I already had to, and like one of the things that I am is a core, is a, a, a contracting officer representative or technical representative for design and construction in, in the government. And so to go from a core one to a core two and a core two to a core three, you kind of have to write an application very similar to, you have to demonstrate that you've done that technical work. So I've already kind of had that to get to the level where I was. Mm -hmm. So I had a good starting point, but that helped me. Now, for someone who's maybe, like you said, if they're if they're just graduating, like you know, they just graduated, um, and then I would say, if you're have your eyes set on being a PE, it definitely, probably, I would say, maybe each year you may want to write a summary of the work that you've done. Mm. You know, um, you know, I would choose like a month of each year, and then each time that month comes, you just write a summary of what you've done and file it away, call it PE prep, well, PE something, something, PE license, whatever that's going to help you like motivate you, like kind of willing into existence, PE license application and just file it there each year. And then that way, yeah, that'll take a weight off of you when you have to start to prepare your application. That would be my recommendation. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing that uh, with us, Andrew. I think a lot of people wonder yeah. about that. I think also it depends on the state. Some states, uh, you can take the exam before you submit your application. Some require that you submit the application first. Um, also, yeah. the eight-year experience, that was also another interesting thing you shared with us because a lot of times people, um, if you have an engineering background, you just need four years experience, but because yours right. was technology engineering, so you had to have eight years experience, and luckily you did have that, so you were able yeah. to 
So that's great. It didn't delay you or anything. So that's awesome. Okay. Um, Thank you. Which PE did you take? I took the the PE civil construction. Construction. Okay. It is yes. more related <clears throat> to the work that you do. Is that why you chose? I think because this is one of the most common questions we get. All did did you ask us that over email, or did we talk about it? Because this is something that our students <laughs> always ask us once they pass the FE. Well, we get two questions: which PE should I take, and when are you going to launch the PE course? <laughs> the right, right, yeah. Oh man, yeah. But... I really wish you had a PE course for 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 what I did. But, yeah, you know, um... it's okay. I made it work somehow. <laughs> yeah, I really. Man, yeah, yeah. So but I, I, I remember. I, I remember. Um, we talked. I don't. I, I think it was. We had talked about it once I passed the FE, and um, I was going to take PE structural because that's more in line with like a lot of the, a lot of the projects that I do um for work are have are like civil structural type projects. Mm -hmm. Like those are the ones that I've been really specializing in. And so I thought that that would feed into, you know, it would, from a technical standpoint, it would be easier for me to pick up. But, you know, um, I think when, I, I think when we discussed, I remember I brought it up, he was like, well, the structural one is like pretty tough, right? Yeah. you know, and, and, um, and so I think you had asked me like a couple of questions about why, and I don't, you know, I don't know if the justification was strong enough or not, but it seemed like it leaned it leaned me towards the construction. Okay. And so, um, so yeah, so I I I I think that was the one that I was originally thinking of anyway. And then then I think as I took your as actually as I took your course, also along with the work that I do, when I took your course, I really the structural the the structural uh, um bites that you have were challenging for me at first like it was the it was really tough for me but I like kind of fell in love with it after a while and I love once I understood the concept yeah it was my favorite your structural portion like st statics mm -hmm. and the structural analysis bites that you have became my favorite and so I was going to change my PE journey to structural because of that. Oh. And then because I was doing a lot of those concrete, like a lot of the concrete reinforcing and, and like structural concrete replacement jobs at work, I thought it would, would have been a match, you know, made in heaven. Mm -hmm. But really my experience, I guess, in totality was is more leaned towards the construction mm -hmm. spec of the, P, of the PE. So yeah, that's kind of what made the decision. Okay. Okay. That's great. That really helps. You know, I think, I hope that helps students decide, um, you know, looking at your answer, just like then they ha they can compare it to the type of the work they do and then take what you said into consideration and help them decide which PE uh, they, they can take. Now, yeah. based yeah. on your experience, does it matter which PE you take? That if you have, let's say, construction or PE structure, does it matter? Does it show on the stamp? When you get your license stamp, oh no, matter? it doesn't show, right? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. So it doesn't no. matter. You just nope. Okay. You just whichever one you're comfortable. Uh, you know, it's you can practice in any lane. It just says professional engineering. Okay. okay. And you can practice, kind of like you can decide like how you want to practice and what what do you want to practice in, what do you want to specialize in, so long as it's something that you're competent. Mm -hmm. You're you just can't, you know, you can't step a stamp like an electrical drawing if you've never, if you have no competency, no experience with electrical, no, right. um, I think stamping like an electrical would be like probably not the best. Mm -hmm. So you want to stay kind of in an area that you're specializing in, you researched, you're, you're uh, competent in. But if you take PE construction, like even though I took PE construction, I can still, I, mm -hmm. I feel competent to stamp a structural drawing. Right. And I can stamp it. In, in, and I know in some states, you probably have to take the SE to even do that. But I, like in Maryland, I don't need to. I can, you know, as long as I'm competent in mm -hmm. it, I can just stamp the structural uh, drum. Right. Right. And I, I remember this was also an epic yeah. question. I don't know if you remember it from the FE course. Like if you 
you have um, your PE, can you stamp, if you have a PE, like civil, can you stamp uh, like a mechanical engineering drawing? And then it says like, unless you're competent or one of the, I forgot the exact question. I don't yeah. know if you remember that, right? It's like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like the idea, yeah. like you said, like if you have a civil construction and you're stamping the structural drawings, you got to make sure that you are competent and you know that, you know, the information that you're providing is correct mm -hmm. and you're sure of it. Um, but of course, if you're civil, you can't really just go in and stamp a mechanical drawing because you probably won't have much experience in that field. Okay. Um, and as things go well, you probably look the thing, what's going to happen is it's going to be when it goes, when it's not, when something doesn't check out right. Mm -hmm, you know, you right. can't just say like, you have to be able to speak to your competency at that time. Right. Exactly. And if you can't, people are going to lose confidence in mm -hmm. you and you can really damage your reputation. And so you probably like when you get the stamp, you feel like you don't want to use it unless you're sure that you know what you're talking about. Is when I got my stamp, like that's how I felt. I'm like, yeah, I'm only going to stamp this if I'm 100%, you know, confident in that I know what I'm talking about for this particular design. Yeah, you feel that way. It's like a, it's like a responsibility. Right, right. You know. Yeah, that makes sense. You so you have received your stamp. Would you, can you can you show it? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So to this is the motivate our audience. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes so this is the um the R stamp and then it has the like my seal on the inside awesome and um and then they give you an electronic copy because most most of the times when we're doing designs you know you it's going to be you're going to be stamping it electronically you right. use printing drawings and stamping it hard copies these days right so they give you like a CAD version of the electronic they give mm. you a pdf version a picture version so oh. you can um you can get that from the from the uh from the place where they uh do the stamps so it's very kind of like a up to date with the ages mm, okay. so and this is the electronic awesome and that's and it just says professional engineer. Yeah. And it has exactly. your name on it and the state. And it's it's very it's a very like it's a very surreal experience. Yeah. You know, it's really puts it really like puts it all into perspective, like what how important our job is mm, as, yeah. as engineers. Yeah, that's true. Like the whole time you're like just focus on getting that stamp, getting the PE license, and once you get it, you go to like Ooh, I gotta make sure that when I use this, like, you know, I am 100% sure that the information provided is correct. Now, let me ask you this. If somebody did the work and then you review it, would you be able to do that? Review it and stamp the the, the plan or you would have to like, um, like uh, you know, go over it in depth, in depth. Like, would, <laughs> have, have you used it so far or no, not yet? I haven't used you it haven't, yet. No. Okay, okay, no. okay. No, I, I, so I, you would have to, like, I did a project since I passed the FE, I did a project where I did the design okay. and then the other PE reviewed and stamped it. And so the, the thing is at that time, it's like, even though like I'm doing all the calculations and all the design, but it has to fit that PE's level of comfort. Mm -hmm. So like... You know, like, and he made me like really over design it in a way that I probably wouldn't have. Okay. But he wanted that level of comfort. And I wanted, I needed his stamp. So I just had to kind of do, you know, I <laughs> yeah. tried to talk him off that ledge a little bit, but he he was like, ah. And then he's kind of newer too. So he's he was like, oh. you know, we're both kind of newer into this. So, you know, let's beef it up a little bit. Yeah. You know, I was like, okay. And so it's kind of like that. So I think, you know, what, what happens is you're going to, if you have somebody else do, you know, everything for you, it's still going to have to be tailored towards your level of comfort before you stamp it. Because once you stamp it, they don't care who did the drafting or who did the calcs. All they care about is that you yeah. you take ownership of it. You take liability for whatever you stamp. Yeah. And so you're going to want it to be to your, your level of comfort. Mm. Now, how you do that is up to you. I mean, some engineers may have a lesser tolerance and may may like not need to review it in detail, may, may be okay if they feel like they have a strong EIT or somebody mm -hmm. that's doing it for them. 
but some engineers may be they may use the EIT to do like all the base stuff and then throw like their factor of safety on top of it mm, you know yeah you know or you know so like, kind of like that okay that but just if you, as long as you remember you take ownership of it then I think that will drive you whatever your personality and tolerance is mm. that'll drive you from there yeah you know that's how I look at it yeah Okay, that makes sense. That really helped sharing that sure. example. That really kind of helped to, to see like how to kind of like uh, use it. And it just really, like you said, depends on the person and how comfortable they are. And then also how confident yeah. you are on the person, <clears throat> right, as well. Like if you know somebody and you can you rely on them and you've worked with them a couple of times and you've seen their work and you're like, you know, I've never seen any mistake and I can rely on this person. I think then you can start to trust them. I think that also right. depends on that as well. Okay. Right. And it's going to come down to also like if you're operating like in like a certain county, Mm. And you kind of you you start to understand like what those codes are. You start to understand like what the per, what the permitting authorities look for. Mm. Then probably as the PE, you're you're gonna know like okay to get it approved by the public authority. You're gonna know like what they're gonna be looking for too, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so that'll start to help guide your any like reviews that you do for the people that's doing the the, the work that's under you under your supervision mm, got you okay all right awesome okay so we we talked about the which PE you took the whole process application process <clears throat> let's dive into study resources so um tell us a little bit oh, yeah. about that which study material did you use that helped you prepare for your PE yes so uh, I use the I was watching your interviews. Uh, it's everything. I don't know. I'm talking to the audience, I guess. I don't know. They're somewhere out there. Whoever watches this. So my whole strategy came from you, Kendra, right? The whole, that whole, that whole society, your, the, 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 the community, that's what it is. Your whole community. So I watched the testimonials of the one guy, I think that, past PE, and when I was still preparing for the FE, mm. you had invited him oh, yeah. to come mm -hmm. to one of our um, check-ins, one of our like uh, Saturday meetups. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you still do those, but those are very helpful. You invited him to come and he said it again, like the course that he used, which was the EET. Mm -hmm. And so at that time I jotted it down because I was already thinking about the PE at this time. <laughs> You know, and so I jotted EET down and he said, and I think specifically, he said, if you're taking, they're very, their construction depth was very, is very good. Mm. And so I was like, so that was another thing that kind of helped me pick like construction instead of structural too. Like mm. when you ask like, Hey, why did you, that was another thing. It's like, okay. So it just seemed, okay, well, if he's, if he's good at if, the, if it's proven that this guy is good at the construction depth, um, then, you know, I'm going to, I want to utilize him for that. And so, um, so yeah, I did the EET depth. I purchased that. It was like five or $600 or, or something. Okay. And then I ran out of time because I, I purchased it. And then like I ran by December, it was finished. Oh, I wasn't and I wasn't done studying yet and so I was like uh, and you remember my schedule my original exam in February so I was like I had two whole months I didn't want to just sit around and do nothing and so I went back to him and say oh you know and then I think he let me purchase like an extension at a prorate a prorated okay so he was very good about that so he let me kind of prorate it and purchase like an extension for like it was like maybe a hundred dollars or something like that okay and um so I thought that was cool so I got it, I got it up to, to, to the time that I needed. And then that, I used that program to kind of prepare for the depth. And then the, everything else just came from your, your course. Really? I'm, yes. I'm, I'm a bit surprised just because the, okay. So let's take a step back and, and, and clarify things for the audience as well, because you did take it twice. So you took it February and then you also took it, uh, june was that correct right and mm -hmm. they did change it so so the, the okay so when you took it february they changed it from paper-based because there's a lot of changes so that's why i just want to clarify so that 
you know, the audience is not confused. So they changed yeah. it from paper-based to computer-based. And so you took it February computer-based, but it will still split between depth and breadth, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you didn't pass that one. And then you kept studying and then you retook it June. You wanted it to take it beforehand. I, you, you, you know what? I'll let you share that story. Can you tell us a little bit about that? The first attempt, <laughs> second attempt. Uh, you were doing great. <laughs> and then tell us which material you use both. I'm so really surprised that you were able to just use those two materials to pass your PE. But go ahead and and please clarify uh, your, your, your journey there. Yes. So... So I took, um, so the, yeah, so like you said, so they, they, the first test that I took had a lot more of the, the, um, kind of breath and there was a lot of like more economic analysis stuff and more, mm -hmm. um, there was, a, there was, um, and I probably can't, I don't know if I, I can't get too specific, but right. there was, there was, it was a lot more broad, the first exam. Okay. Um, the second exam really felt a lot more. It was for me the statics was like such an important part of the journey, like for the PE. And mm. the, the the statics is such a a good base um, mm. because you're. I, I think for most of that concept for the second PE attempt, it just seemed like it was weaved through, mm. I want to say probably 60 to 70% of the, of the exam. Wow. Just the concept of right. statics, mm -hmm. like the, the, you know, how to, how to, how to know what forces are, how to analyze forces. Right. You're just transferring it from, you know, just, you know, maybe a beam or, you know, a, you know, maybe like a truss, you're transferring it to like a a crane carrying an object, mm. you know, or a, a boom lift, mm -hmm. but it's still just triangles and forces. And so it's still just statics. And so, and I felt like the, the second exam, statics was so much more impactful for that exam mm. than the first one. The first one just felt like it was a more a lot, a lot more fluids, mm. mechanic type stuff in there, a lot more like transportation type problems in there, stuff that I was not the strongest in actually. <laughs> so so but in the when they changed it, uh it wasn't as much fluids. I really don't remember much of any really fluid mechanic. If they did, it was very simple stuff like you know, maybe like open channel stuff, very mm -hmm. simple. Um, um, water hydrology, not a lot of it. And then the ones that were, it was very simple, but mostly it was like construction and like in statics, basically. Yeah. So, um, I, so like I said, so I just used the EAT, the EAT, EET, uh, prep. And I don't know if, how much, if you have another follow up, but I did not, uh, and I use your, and like I said, I use your program. Yeah. And I think yours was, where your program was so helpful for me was the geotech. Okay. The geotech um, um, a portion of your program um, with the, in there, there's the, uh, you, you talk about like the soils and, mm -hmm. and the like kind of retaining structures it was all I needed to, mm. to, to be prepared. Like the, just how to do, you know, how to do the, the analysis of the soils and, and um, the, uh, the uh, uh, kind of Rankine pressure and all of that. It was way more, it was, if, if, if you understand that, if I understood that part, that was all I needed. Um, and the structural analysis, mm -hmm portion of your exam because I didn't purchase like I said I didn't purchase any morning I didn't purchase any morning prep programs for the PE okay I only purchased the construction depth portion and then I used that in tandem with your program and that's what prepared me wow okay and I was and I was fully prepared I mean it was even when my first attempt the diagnostic it was like I performed really, really good in some areas. Yeah. 
And then I would I performed like really bad in one area that I think that's probably was the main reason. But most of the other areas I was right on the cusp. Yeah. But the fact that I performed really, really good in some areas and like above average in some areas, I was like, okay, I, I knew I was on the right track. So I was like, I don't think I need to change mm. my material because I would have performed bad in everything if I need to change the material. So I just said, let me just focus on in the areas that I just need to focus on. Most of them was like stuff that I knew I was weak in from your program. So I just went back to your program. I was like, okay, um, I'm already used to your learning style. And it, I knew it was more than enough. I just had to have, an, um, uh, I just had to have that, the, er, the, the, the knowledge that, okay, I really need to focus on this in order to pass the PE. And when I did, I, I was able to get it, understand the concepts from your course. Like the, again, the geotech, um, some of the, a little bit of the transportation, um, those were kind of the ones that I focused on the most from your course. Um, and, and, and some of the, in the water resources, mm. I really went through your water resources, um, program, probably the, the most out of any other program, mm. like even for the FE. Like I went through that because I was so weak in it for the FE. I kind of got by for the PE. It was kind of like, I didn't do as well. And I was like, okay, if I want to get over this hump, let me really understand it. And there was enough there for me to understand it. Yeah. I just had to put the effort in and, and, and that was it. So I know that was kind of a long answer, but hopefully that, you know, covered. Yeah, no, that's great. Question. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, a lot of our audience are going to appreciate that because I th like I said, this is one of the most common questions we get. It's, you know, along with which PE to take is what study resources sh should we take, right? Uh, especially because our students are used to our courses and our style and they're looking for something similar to that. And so this is, they come to us uh, for advice. And, and like you said, we have a community. And so we ask our students what they use to pass their PE. And, and uh, we try to help our students as much as we can. So thank you for that answer. That was very, very helpful. Um, I do want to uh, uh, talk a little bit about the, the changes for the FE because it, you took it February, it changed in April, right? And then you took it June, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And um and then I remember looking at your diagnostic yeah. report from the first one and I was I was looking at it and I was like, this is pretty good. Um like you were you were not far off. Um I, I really liked how you looked at it and you're like, okay, obviously I'm doing really well. Obviously these resources are are helping me. So I just gotta reinforce some of the concepts and keep going. And I think that's that's a really good strategy because a lot of people they get their diagnostic report and they just don't know what to make of it. Um, if they should change study resources or just keep going. Um, the other thing I wanted to um, talk a little bit about was the fact that you said, I want to talk about the differences between DP. I think once, because they made so many changes within two years, I think. And so when they changed mm -hmm. it again, and, and the second time they changed it, because first they changed it from paper-based to computer-based, but then the second time they changed it, that was a big change, right? They removed... Right. Um, so before it used to be the breadth was the same for all the civil, PE civil. There's like five geotech mm -hmm. construction, structural, right? Water resources. They all had similar uh, breadth, but now they they changed that. Uh, and so right. I think a lot of people were afraid of those changes. And then also when we get I got emails from students about what resources to use, I wasn't sure what to recommend because I was not sure um, if the courses out there have updated their courses based on these new changes, right? And so that's why that's why I was like really surprised when you said that you actually used the same exact resources for the first attempt and the second attempt. Um, but I do want to go back to the the exam format. You mentioned that the first one, I, f I feel like when you were talking about your experience, you preferred the second, for the, the new changes, the new exam versus the previous one? Did you find it easier? <laughs> I feel like you found it easier and you enjoyed it more. The way you were talking about it, you were like, oh, the first one had a lot of fluid mechanics and it's had econ engineering econ and it's held all these things that, you know, I, I didn't want it. I don't like those things. So the second one, on the other hand, like you, you just had more positive energy. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, one I failed, one I passed. Wait, so wait, that's probably, true. <laughs> you know, I don't know. It might be maybe I'm just you know, it's like recency bias. I don't know, yeah. but but 
but what I what I did do is I took the specs for both. So I don't. Everyone may not be. Maybe this will speak to somebody and help somebody, right? So I took the spec from both exams, the new one and old one. And what I did was I went spec by spec. They got rid of sections of of, of the old spec, mm. um, but some of the subsets they put some of those subsets of those sections into other sections mm. so you so uh, you had to be kind of careful because you would say because at, at one point i thought they had completely got rid of transportation oh. for instance because they they don't have the transportation spec in the new const, uh, construction spec okay it's not there but but they have like you still have to know vertical curves Okay. And you still have to know like a uh, horizontal curves. They put that under, I want to say geo a geo the geometrics or something. Mm, they yeah. they just put those two, but you but they remove like um some of the speed stuff, like okay. the speed. So so it was like, so that's what I did. And I and I wanted to know, okay, what did they remove? What did they put somewhere else? And so I knew that the programs, like you said, like I already had these resources. I knew that if I went to a certain program, if they added one of the subsections to it, that it wouldn't be covered in that program. But they didn't add any new subsections. Got you. Based on what I, they just kind of took, they either, they removed them or they either removed them completely or they put like an old subsection under somewhere else. So basically what that meant to me was, oh, wow, okay, I don't need any new resources mm -hmm. because they didn't add anything new. They just mm -hmm. shifted it around. And as and, and, and in many cases for the overall, they kind of actually reduced mm -hmm. like a little bit. They kind of reduced it um, and just made it more focused on certain aspects of, of, of that industry. If that makes sense. Yeah. So they 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 remove sections to emphasize other to take portions of that section to emphasize the main sections. So that's kind of what they did. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you for clarifying that. I think that a lot of people are going to appreciate that answer because there were a lot of videos out there and people were not sure like what's this whole change is about. So that really yeah. helps. So they, they removed some sections, they rearranged it and they made it just more focused in the discipline you're taking basically. Yes. Okay. And, and I think if you, and another thing I did was I paid attention to the differences in the practice exam, mm. the NCES practice exam. So I said, right. okay, you know, um, if I kind of went line for line with the practice exams, like, okay, what problems did they remove from the old mm. one? What problems did they keep? Just to see like, okay, what is the NCES's mind on what they're trying to do here? So I just really tried to get an understanding of that. Okay um a, kind of almost like ahead of the study a little bit yeah okay okay and then um yeah can you walk us a little bit about the reference handbook situation I heard that there are a lot of reference handbook for each set can you just walk us through that a little bit the 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 the, the one that they 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 allow you to right. use mm -hmm. correct um, is it like the so, FP exam or is there a lot of them? No, no, yes, it's like the FE. Okay. Okay. It's like the FE. The only the only thing is like there's just the 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 civil reference uh the civil reference handbook is it contains the information for all of the civil disciplines. Oh. So if you're if you're doing civil water hydraulics, your water hydrology or civil, you know, the water resources, right. you're going to have the same handbook that I had, okay. which is still going to have all the construction, right. all the, the structural mechanics stuff, all of that. But you just want to make sure that for your portion of the exam, you get really familiar with the water, water resources uh, portion of the handbook. Okay. So there's one civil handbook and it has all the main sections in there. Um, and then it has like a little bit of math, a little bit of economic analysis, which I presume is in all, is in, is in all of them and a little bit of, uh, 
a little bit of uh, materials, me mechanics of mechanics of solids, mechanics of materials, yeah. and then from there it's all the the civil, the heavy, the depth civil sections in there. Okay, okay, all right, that that makes sense. Um, let's see, let's uh, uh, talk a little bit about your schedule. So I know you said you studied from September to February you took it you didn't pass on your second yeah. attempt did you take a break or did you go back to studying right away till June I no yeah I did take a break you did okay I took a break probably for let's see it was in February so I took a break maybe just like a, a few weeks, few weeks? You know, a couple of weeks I, you know and then I probably so here's the here's the thing Kenza I, and this might shock, this might surprise you. So I, <laughs> as you know, I, I started with you, with your program, I think in 2022. Correct. And so from 2022 until I failed the PE, you know, minus like the little break I took in between after I passed the FE. I I basically been been like crazy just studying. Oh wow! Right, like I I was you know just from the moment I started with you, we had a couple conversations about my schedule. I remember right. we kind of talked, and then we kind of, you helped me out there in the beginning. Um, um, and then once we smoothed that out, and I, and, and I got into a rhythm, I was pretty consistent. Like I was studying for every night. You know, every now and then I would kind of like not, you know, just to re, re kind of rekindle. But for the most part, like I really, really committed to studying. So from the crazy thing is from the time that I failed the PE, the first PE to the to June, I I, I was not I did not follow the same study schedule that I followed this whole time. Okay. I really felt that kind of that I, I focused for, I took probably like four weeks where I really just, I took each week, I focused on a week area from the diagnostic. Okay. So the goal was, you know, let's say I, I start as Sunday to Sunday. So I would do from Sunday I would start, let's say, water resources. Um, I would watch your, your 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 program, and then I started to do it. And I would just try to solve problems on during the week, and then that following Sunday, um, I would go to the next one, the next week, and I did that for four weeks, probably in between that March to April time frame. After that, I kind of like really didn't have like a regimen mm. I, because I, I looked at, so I went back, I looked at all my notebooks from studying for the FE and I did this the night before I took the exam too. And it boosted my confidence. I, because I looked at all the notes that I did for the FE, all the notes that I did for the PE. And I just said to myself, Andre, you, you put in, you, you didn't cheat the time you put in the time. Mm. And I, it, I don't know, it just, I think conf, that that confidence is what allowed me to, mm -hmm. to, 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 to really sit down the second time. And, and, and I had, I had like, like no stress because it just felt like, it, cause I didn't have to take, I didn't like take a lot of practice exams because I took the FE, I took multiple practice exams with the FE. I took multiple practice exams for the first round of the PE and then I took the PE. So I didn't have to practice because the main thing that helped me with the practice exams is that getting used to the atmosphere and focusing mm -hmm. for definitely take practice exams. It, it is, that is, I think the most important thing you can do in any of these journeys practice, because even though you know it sitting down for five, five or six hours with the FE or, and or sitting down for eight to nine hours with the PE is not easy if that's the first time you're doing it. Mm -hmm. I agree. Right? Yeah. 
practice exams as many of them as you can take that your your mental capacity can take do it to practice the the atmosphere and the strategy in the and so um so i i what i am saying all this to say um from february i took about i did 4 weeks of hard study in between february to june from there what i just started to do is make sure i was working on my timing so i would i would do like let's say 10 problems a day mm. And I would say, okay, well, I know that, um, and not even every day, it was just like, I would just choose like a random day and just do 10 problems. Cause I wanted to make it, a, I, want, I didn't want to make it feel so weighty anymore. Mm. I was like done with that. I'm like, all right, I've done all of that already. So I just wanted to make myself, but can I just wake up one day and solve 10 problems in, a, in an hour? Cause the, you, the average time is like what, six minutes for that, for the PE is like kind of what it breaks down to. Okay. So I would just take a night and instead of doing like two to three hours every night, I would just take a random night and say, all right, I'm going to sit down for about an hour, hour and a half, see if I can get through 10 problems without any major hiccups. And I just did that kind of randomly okay. until I, until I took the exam. Interesting. Let me ask you this. Would you have done that if you, if you didn't, so, so. Does that I, make it hard for you to ask me the question? I know that's so, I, that's what I said, this might shock me. I, I, it is, it is. It, yeah, I am but surprised, but. At I'm same, being honest. I, yeah. I just, you know. No, no, it's <laughs> awesome. I mean, it's it's great to say yeah. that because, you know, actually it's happened before with one of our students. I interviewed her, Tanisha. She failed the FE exam 11 times. And on her last attempt, she literally <sighs> did that. She was like, I'm just going to like, because I think the anxiety and distress and she stressed so much about this exam that each time it just really affected her performance. And she was even going to wow. postpone it. She was like, but then she missed the mark. It was like a date. Hats like, off to her, whoever that is. It's a, hats off to you. Yeah. 11, like you, that yeah. is just an un, almost unmatchable um, uh, dedication. Oh, well, yeah. And, I, and, and yeah. I'm so glad that that example is out there. Yeah. I, I really hope yeah. that that motivates so many students. I know, right? I know. Like, it's like she could have given up wow. an eight time, nine time. Ten. It's so awesome. Yeah. It's so amazing. And for her to come to our channel and share that, like, we appreciated that a lot because, you know, we just hope somebody out there, similar situation, given up on the FE a few years ago, um, hoping that would, you know, motivate them to get back to it because I think it's, it's possible and they can do it. But, um, but yeah, it's funny because on her last attempt, she was like, you won't believe this. Like I didn't study for two months. I was going to postpone the exam, but I couldn't, it was too late. And I was like, okay, I'll just take this as a practice exam. She went in and she passed it. So I think, but I, I really think though, she, she worked towards that without her realizing it, right? All the studies that she've done before, all that, it was there, but she was just too stressed to just like take the exam in a calm um, way so that she can pass it. But when she was able to do that, she did good. And so with you, it's a bit different, but I wonder if like all this, because you said when you first told us about this, you said that I've been studying since 2022 nonstop. And I feel like that's what really prepared you for that moment, Andre. I think you have built all that confidence and all that foundation and all that way before that, right? Um, and, yeah. and I think that's what led you to that moment and let you, and then also I think that what might've helped you as well is that you got your diagnostic report and you're like, oh, wow, I'm actually close. Uh, and that might've also given you confidence to go like, this is easier than I thought and I can actually do this. Right. And then you, you know, yes. you laid back. So I think for the last two years, you were preparing for this moment. That's that's how I see it. But but yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. And it's funny because this is one of the questions mm -hmm. I had here for you. Did the FE help you prepare for you? Uh help you prepare with your um uh, PE preparation. And uh I think yes. I think yeah. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. In terms of confidence, yes. foundation, concepts, I think yes. all of it. Yeah. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. Everything about it. Yeah. 100%. 100%. I'm actually glad that I took the FE in the way that I did. I'm glad that I took it so far after I graduated. Mm, interesting. It, it got me. Yeah. It got me back. It, 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 it just, it's, I can't even express it. It was, 
I can't express it. I can only have the words right now. I don't, and I don't just want to talk just to talk. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So do you recommend <laughs> students to wait till they take the FE and their PE? A lot of people. This say might sound that. crazy, but yeah, yeah, because once you get I, trying to, I think trying to study for the PE after you've let's say passed the FE a long time ago, you've been working because the PE, I can see how it can be a heavy exam. Mm. I can see how that exam can be really heavy, like because it is assuming that you have a firm foundation like it, it's it can be a really heavy exam yeah um but if you had just studied for the fe going into the pe actually might be easier mm. it it's it's an easy it's an it's a it's an easier exam to focus for i i, I don't want to like lead people to think it's an easier exam overall i probably it's it probably is actually like, I don't, even though I passed the FE on my first time, but I also prepared for that for like a, a yeah. whole, mm -hmm. you know, for a long time. Right. Yeah. So, um, and then I had your course, you know, that was just so tailored for the FE. Um, the PE, I think, I think is, can be easier than the FE if, if you have just taken the FE. Mm. But I think if you if you wait and then try to take the PE, oh, it can be, I can see where it can yeah. be really heavy for you at that time. Yeah. But not impossible. You can do it. I mean, mm -hmm. you can definitely yeah. do it, of course. But yeah. Okay. Okay. No, I see it. I, it totally makes sense. Yeah. Because I think, you know, like you said, like getting to the FE after you've been out of school for a while, I think it m might be easier than if you just start right away with the PE if you've been out of school for a while, right? And, you know, like, right. you know what I'm saying? Um, so let's say you didn't graduate, you graduated 15 years ago and you have to start preparing for your FE. I think that's slightly easier than if you just have to start right away your PE. Yes. One, yes, that's the, you just- Right? That, you I, just think, I think so, yes. yeah. Yeah, you will- Because you have to bring, you right. have to bring all of that yeah. FE, like statics right. and all- who remember? No one remembers static no. from, from <laughs> after, and that is such a heavy, yeah. like you, like you almost have to know statics, like drinking water, taking the pee. Wow, wow. You know, like your that concept yeah. has to be so ingrained in you. You have yeah. to be able to look at a system and see statics in that system. Yeah. And so, going into the PE without having a firm foundation, like statics. It's it's that's heavy. Right. That would be it would be heavy for you. At the very least, you probably need to take a statics course. Right. Yeah. You know, like a statics FE course or something, or like a really heavy statics course before preparing for the PE, at least for the construction. Right. Depth is probably the same for the structural one. Maybe right. I don't know, but I know for the structure construction one, statics is such a it's 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 irreplaceable. Did you did you review our statics course or were you like yes you did okay yes did. yes okay. yeah I did I went back I looked at some of the trust items I looked at some of the um just uh the the uh, uh like kind of like um the forces like the you know equilibrium and right. you know those the the um the cables okay yep yep those cable are important because a lot of like the um again, like the crane problems and it's statics, right. you know, um, moment, you know, like, uh, mm, you yeah. have to find the tipping point yeah. for a tipping point for a crane. And it has loads over here and it has a, it has a, it has a uh, counterbalance mm -hmm. over here. And it, Kenza, I mean, it's literally statics. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah. You, you know? And so, uh, yeah, going back and reviewing that, I did go back and review the statics course. Um, at least one time in in the PE prep. Okay. Your, your course, yeah. Okay. And do you feel like work experience helped you with your PE? Crazy thing is not really. Other than just, other than just the confidence of like terminology, mm. you know, and um and and by the way, they use the word in one of my PE in the in the in the the one that I passed. They use the word that that I was like, um, 
if I would have failed the second one, I was going to be like, do I need to go study like vocabulary word? They used a word I didn't even know what it meant. Interesting. It was like pre something, pre, pre, uh, it was a word that I was like, how do you know this unless you're just like a, we don't, I don't study words like that. <laughs> I can't even understand the question. Preclude is what it was. It was like the word, and I might be, I mean, there's probably some people that's going to watch this like Andre, duh, preclude, but I had no idea what preclude mean. And it was like, we're dealing with like a concrete problem. I was mm. like, I can, I felt like I could answer it if I just understood what that word, word. <laughs> yeah. I was like preclude. I never used that. I yeah. Anyway, so, um, so yeah, so I I um I, I forgot your question, but a work know. experience, if the work experience helped oh, yeah, you yeah. to be, yeah. yeah. Not not a, other than just confidence and understanding like some of the terminology on the exam. Yeah. Um, I would say like from a mental from a um uh because the, the exam is very it's like taking a test. It's an aptitude, it's not an aptitude, but it's very like uh it's 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 not like based on work experience as much as it's based on mm. your ability to recall concepts and maybe if you're and specific, in particular the construction one it's tricky because if you're in like let's say construction management you know or you're you're managing construction you're not actually doing calculations on foam lifts and stuff you're not you're not actually mm. like you know, really doing some of the things that you're having to apply for this exam. Um, so I would say probably if you're taking the exam in a subject that's more, uh, maybe more directly related to an actual like concept, maybe like if you're a structural engineer mm. and then you take the structural PE or if you're a geotechnical engineer and you take the, maybe it's more. So hopefully if there's other students that pass those, they might can speak to that more, mm. but as far as the construction one, my work, other than just understanding certain terminologies, didn't translate. It was really the material, preparing for the FE, and then studying for the PE. And and that was it. Okay. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good to know. Um, let's talk about the exam experience itself. Can you walk us through that a little bit? How many questions you guys get how many hours do you have to answer those questions and what is the, the exam like yes so it was 42 problems <clears throat> in the morning okay and then there were 38 problems in the afternoon and it was the same like kind of pretty much the same both times okay um and so the the i the at the i i it's a very, it's a much more flexible environment than you think. I mean, you sit down, you're given all this time and, you know, you know, if you need to go, like, I think there's a misconception that once you're there, you just have to stay, right? But it's not really the case. You know, you can get there. If you need to step out, go take a drink of water, step out, go take a walk, just clear your mind. If you're just getting frustrated, um, you want to stay calm during the exam, yeah. I think. Like, so whatever you need to do to be calm and stay calm that's more important than the time, I think. Mm. So, um, cause you're just sitting there frustrated and wasting time, you know? Um, and my, and I you go in with a strategy. Um, the worst thing you can do is go to take this exam with no exam strategy. You have to have an exam strategy. And so, um, because that's what you're studying. You're, you, 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 you put in the effort, you know, the information, but, the 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 strategy will help you apply that information in a way that keeps your confidence going. And so one of the things that that Kenza, you 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 uh you taught through your, your your exam is like that positive energy, like getting some type of positive reinforcement. And so like one of the things that I used to do when I was in your program, when I couldn't understand like one of your concepts, I would go somewhere else and like solve a problem and like get that energy back mm. and then try. And so you have to be com comfortable skipping problems. Yeah. You know, you, you have, cause you're not going to be able to solve everything in rapid succession. So, um, and then, but the, you're only going to be confident in that if you're, if you're confident that you will be able to solve problems, right? Because if you're skipping so many problems and you're not solving anything, you're going to feel bad. Right. Yes. So, the preparation 
allows you to have the strategy. So prepare well, prepare very, very well. But when you go into exam, have a strategy. I did have a strategy and I executed that strategy. And 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 I don't think if I executed, and I don't think if I had a strategy, even though I prepared, I don't think I would have passed, mm. you know, so. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, that makes total sense. I think it's really, I was talking about, um, I interviewed uh, students uh, two weeks ago and it was similar. He talked about like, um, if like for the FE exam, you know how math is the first section. And he really said that he spent so much time focusing on math because he's like, if I didn't get those first questions in math, it's going to affect my confidence. And in the exam, because he was able to get them, he's like, I like right away, I was calm and I was able to do well on my exam. And I think that's really, really important. So yeah. I, I, I agree. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And can I, can I speak to a little bit of my strategy? Yes, of course. Yes, please. Yes. Is that okay? Yeah. Share with us your strategy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's obviously it's hard to think of it on the fly because I was trying to think of what kind of questions would Penzo ask, but <laughs> yeah, you never, you never can know. Like you <laughs> always, you're so creative, so it's like hard. But um, so I so what helped me was it, and I and I and I keep going back to the F to preparing for your exam. So remember when um I, we had talked and you said, hey Andre, um if you why don't you just watch all of the videos. You know, and in the in the program, in in the in a section, and then come back and then solve the problems. So it's like stuff like that. That, and I keep going back to that because I want you to see, and in, in the people that are seeing this to see, like how that prep really carried itself throughout this entire journey. And so my goal with taking a PE was expose myself to the problems, all of the problems in like the first. I wanted to see all the problems in the first ninety minutes of the exam. Mm. so so oh well you know in the first section so if I knew there was like 40 something problems I knew I would have about 240 minutes to solve all of them okay. theoretically yeah. right mm -hmm. and so and so I said all right so there's you know 40 problems six 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 minutes per problem 240 minutes for the first section right what's 90 minutes out of that I'll okay. still be I'll still have 150 minutes to put in. Mm -hmm. So I went through and I just solved as many as I could like very quickly in those first 90 minutes. If it was 10, 15, 20, great. But no matter what, even if it's just five, now I'm going back and I have, you know, 150 minutes for the rest. Mm -hmm. So the goal was to solve as many really, really easy ones, like ones that I can just solve in half, the, like three minutes. If I couldn't solve it like right away, I just flagged it, even if I knew the solution. Okay. Because my goal and my strategy was I want to see all the problems. Right. And then solve the easy ones along the way. So that's what I did. So in the first 90 minutes, I saw the whole exam. And I was like, oh wow, okay. Mm -hmm. Like I saw what I was up against. I saw what I knew I knew, but I just knew it needed more time. And I felt good because I had already answered a few of them. Wow. Okay. So when I went back through, I'm like, oh, wow, I still got 150 minutes to go back through. And so I just went back through. Okay. And then that in that time, I gave myself another time. I was like, OK, in let's say 60 minutes, I want to try to get through all the ones that I know, but they just take a little bit more time. Mm. So that might have been like 10, maybe 15 problems. So now I'm more than probably halfway through. I've seen every problem twice now. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I have like, let's say an hour and a half left. And most of that, those problems might be problems that I kind of, I knew were going to be really challenging. I might not have gotten anyway. Yeah. And, or, you know, problems that I maybe just guessing anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so it's like problems that maybe if I just spend more time, I could find the information and get them or problems that I can maybe make an educated guess or problems that I just know I have no idea, mm. but I already know what I'm up against for that mm. last leg of the race. And that just, that reduces anxiety and it, and it really gave me the confidence. And I did the same thing for the second half, the second section, same exact strategy. Got you. Okay. Okay. Now, did you get exactly four hours in the morning and then the time ended or 
whatever hours left from the morning gets passed to the afternoon, just like the FE exam? Yes. If you if you have a balance, whatever balance you have left in the in the first half, that balance gets put in the second half. Got you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's that's yeah. That's okay. Cool. And you were <laughs> able to finish the exam on time. Yeah. Okay. You didn't. Yeah, I even I I lost two minutes before lunch. Oh, you did. And I was oh, like, yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, because you know you lose. Yeah. Lose track of time. Right. Right. I was, right. Just, yeah. I was just focused on eating. Yeah. So I just left. <laughs> And I forgot to, I forgot to, to start like my time. Yeah. <laughs> and when I came back, I saw like minus two minutes. I was like, great. Right, well. <laughs> I was like, if it comes down to, uh, uh, I need, do I need those two minutes? Then I'm probably not doing as well as I should be. So right. I yeah. quickly got over it, but still, it just doesn't, it's like, cause I, you know, it's like one of those like quick wins. I'm like, ah, oh, you know, like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Come back without losing time was would have been a quick win, but whatever. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, can all go well, right? So. Yeah, the, yeah. No, I, I, I like you. I like your strategy. So you went real quick the first, and then you put a timer, and then you went back to the ones that are a little bit longer, and then what you had left was the ones that were challenging, and then, and then, yeah. And then at that point, like you said, what I really like about that strategy is just ex getting exposed to those questions more than once. Because a lot of times you see the question first and then you start freaking out. You're like, oh my God, I don't know this. That gun looks challenging. I don't know. And then you start, but then the second time you come back to it and you're like, wait a second. I can do a free body diagram here. I can break down these things. This is easier than I thought. So I think exposing yeah. yourself to the question multiple times just kind of makes it easier each time you look at it, if that makes sense. So yeah. um, it does. And yeah. You might solve a problem later yeah. that re helps you remind you about a concept that you can apply to a previous problem. Right. Like that happened to me like two or three times during yeah. the exam. Oh, oh, oh. And then it yeah. made me change my answer. Like, oh, the, yeah, right. Like, yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah. Okay. All right. Awesome. Okay. So uh, you passed your P exam and um, congratulations, by the way, I did, I did said it, but I want to say it again, I know how, <laughs> how much yeah. it's meant for you to be here and to have your PE license. Now, when you passed yeah. your PE, was did you have to do anything after that to get your license or was it just right away they sent you you got your license what was the process after that yeah I, pa I passed I got the email <clears throat> from the uh the the once I passed it was just like within two business days I got an email from the Merlin board saying oh. it's so encouraging it's like you passed the PE exam. You are now a licensed professional engineer. It just happened wow. right, right, just right out, right away. Yeah. And so, man, I was like, you know, um, and then you just go through. You pay your registration fee, right? To you know, of course, and then from there, you get your, uh, you get your license, your actual wow. license document, mm -hmm. around, everything, and then you can get your seal you know and yeah. so yeah it was right away wow okay awesome um now how did passing the PE affected your personal and professional life mm. man <laughs> um yes it was it's it's like it's like night and day honestly like it, it really when I woke up the next morning everything was like the, like the oxygen smelled different yeah. like the <laughs> oxygen doesn't have a smell but you know what I mean it just yeah <laughs> everything it just felt yeah. everything felt different right and, yeah and people it like immediately yeah first of all everyone's just happy to hear it because I think yeah. I think I think because we're humans Sometimes when someone close to us succeeds at something, you feel like it's yours. Yeah. So yeah. it's like I'm telling people, and they're they're so excited, yeah. and they're really celebrating with me. Um, it gave me more confidence right away. Yeah, because college was rough for me. You know, I was not one of those students that was like crushing it. You know, I really crawled through college. I really 
I had to write a letter to the school one time because my grades wasn't high enough. So I had to write a letter to oh, wow. to to like keep my financial aid because they were threatening to take it from me because I just wasn't doing well and it's calculus too like it was really an issue for me in college, wow. and um and so I battled like imposter syndrome like because mm. I, I I thought I was like forcing this engineering thing, and um and you know no one I hung around was really engineers I hung around all the people that were not engineers they were all like. And I should have probably been tucked away studying, but I was just so like in just just you know um, just in the college element and experience, and um, so it took me a while to get through college, and um, and so five and a half years right, I spent in college, and so um, and so you know, and then I had the engineering tech degree, you know, and and so it wasn't like a hard set engineering degree, mm. and. Um, I I didn't work a lot as an engineering tech in the in the in in after school. I worked for a little while, but then I kind of transitioned into my current role, which is very protected. You know, it's very, you know, we don't really do a lot of the design because we hire the resources for the design efforts and we just kind of provide oversight in a lot of ways. So you gotta really try to do a design and really you know, it's, it's, it's really something that you have to have the mind to try to do. Mm. And so like, it's hard, it was hard for me to really feel like an engineer, you know, um, and really feel like it was something that I deserved to be for such a long wow. time. And so passing the FE, becoming an EIT, and then passing the PE, even just for myself, it, it allowed me to, to wake up with a new level of confidence and, um, and, and I, and I, and I just appreciate, um, the journey and, uh, I appreciate, uh, you uh, being a part of that journey and your team gives us. So, um, but the other people too, like even at work, I mean, my voice kind of carries a little more in the room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of, it's interesting. Um, yeah. and, uh, yeah, this is, is a very, very, very exciting. So. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. I, I did, I yeah. didn't know you had the. A rough time in college and just like you know hearing that and seeing what you have done the last two years and when you have what you have accomplished right and just think about it Andrea you've done this in two years probably maybe less I don't know when you started 2022 probably like mid it, it, we can say it's been exactly two years right um yeah were you able to get your EIT and your PE which is incredible because I've, you know, I've, I know students who've been trying to get FE in like five years or six years, right? And look how much you got done in just two years, right? You've spent less time getting your PE license than in college, just to put things into perspective, um, right. right? And so it's 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 incredible what you have achieved in in short amount of time. Now I know Andre in twenty twenty two. If I would have told him you would have passed in PE in twenty 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 four, he would have been like, "I'm impatient. I need it now." But now that you <laughs> are here, <laughs> right? Um, That's right. <laughs> when you look at it, right, two years it's nothing yeah. really. Um, but it's it's amazing, and I'm really happy for you and the uh, and the. Uh, I, I'm sure you're gonna do amazing things uh, for that, your job and also for your community. I know we talked about this a little bit uh, before we started this interview. One of the things why you really want to do PE license is because you really want to help your community and your church and give back. And and you couldn't yeah. do it at the moment and you were trying to rush the FE and I'm like, Andre, we will get there. Just trust the process. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm yeah. really... I'm really glad that you did and I'm really happy for you that you got here and the, now you're able to help the community and also excel in your job. So you did amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Kenza. You have a gift, you know, oh. and you're, um, you, you really, really do. And um, I, it, it wouldn't have, I told my wife the other day, I said, um, Cause she, I, I told her that you had, you, you had sent me like the congratulations and everything. She was like, I, I, she was like, she was so important for this. I was like, yeah, you know, she was the catalyst. You know, I, I, I would have tried to figure it out, obviously. I mean, you know, 
right? It's one way or the other, I would have tried to, I would have figured something out. Um, but I don't know if it would have happened this fast. And I don't know if it would have happened with this level of clarity and kind of happiness. Hmm. Um, so you were kind of the catalyst to it happening in this fashion, in this way. And, um, you know, it wouldn't have ha been able to happen this way without you. So you're, re you were really a gift, no. you, know, you know, to me. Oh, yeah. thank and you. as you will be to 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 many others yeah thank you andre i appreciate it thank you so much that means a lot yeah. we really appreciate it um now i have one last question for you if a student mm -hmm. comes up to you mm -hmm. and asks you to list three things that really helped you pass your pe exam what would you suggest to them uh, okay oh, here's that question again <laughs> yeah i love this question because it's really like if somebody just wanted to get to the last, you because know, three you need three important things, right? What are those? Right. And and it's it's interesting because it really differs for everybody. And so it's it's I, I love this question because it's just it's yeah yeah. <laughs> it's a fantastic question. It's just it's like you know it, it's 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 just there's so there's three things. Yeah. <laughs> trust the journey trust the process trust the you, uh, acknowledge you're on a journey mm. acknowledge that this is a journey that this is a it's a process because whatever you go through whether good or bad if you acknowledge that it's part of the journey to your goal, then then it will help you deal with all the ups and downs that come with it. Um, and so that's number one. Two would be uh, st stay committed. Stay committed. <clears throat> and then three would be. The three would be put in the time. And uh, I, I kind of want to say it in a different way. Um, put in the time, but be, be, uh, be confident in the effort that you put in. Mm. Okay. Love it. I love, yeah, really summarize the, your FE and your PE journey. <laughs> it really did. You yeah. really put a summary to your journey. You're like for the FE and the PE. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. There we yeah. go. Okay. All right. So um, what is, what's next for An Andre? Are you going to pass your SE or just stop at the PE? <laughs> <laughs> What's the plan <laughs> after this? No, that's a great, great question. I, right now, is just going to be to kind of um, focus on, like you said, just trying to see where I can, how I can be, utilize this to help the community and, the, and, and, and my church, society, my neighbors, um, and stand up a, stand up a practice I want to really, you know, really do this, you know, stand up a practice um, in, in, in my, it's going to have the initials of my, of me and my daughters Aww. and really try to do something that my family can also benefit from mm. as well, because they have been so patient with me <laughs> on this journey, um, made a lot of sacrifices so that I can get here. And although just having it, just having it is enough. Like, I don't want people to think, you know, oh, you have to have it and actually do. Having it is enough. It's going to boost your confidence. It's going to give you a, 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 good, a good voice in any room that, you, that, you, that you're a part of, right? Mm -hmm. um, so just having it is enough for my family too, right? But um, I want to take the extra step and, and try to do something that can actually help contribute, you know, to the family um, long-term. 
And um, if the SE is down the road, for sure, I feel confident that I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Definitely. Definitely. That's great. Uh, but I know it'll be challenging, but I do feel confident. But yeah. but um, it's not in the rear view right now or in the it's not in the uh, the the view. But if that turns out to be a way that I can help more and do more uh, as far as what what, you know, my passion is, then, yeah, you know, we'll see. Yeah. Depends on your journey and where you're going to land, if you're going to need it or not. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. know, and if it gets me to do another one of these, then that might, <laughs> that might be the thing that gets me, gets me, oh, okay, I'll do it. Just so I can you know, have another sit down with Kenza, you know? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's awesome. We can have you back Baby. for you know you don't you don't need your SE. We can have you back and then you can talk about. Um, I don't have to be that extreme. Yeah, we don't have to be that extreme. You can talk about your okay. uh, right. your practice or you know your work okay. experience or you know Wonderful. we can if you want to. Yeah, we would love to have you back. So uh, I really, yeah. Andre, I really enjoyed talking to you today. Um, it, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's it's was I was really excited about this interview and. Uh, it's, I don't want to say it's the end, but but it, it's a beginning of something. I think it's it's gonna it's the beginning of something amazing, and I'm really excited for you, and and I'm so proud of you. Like I mentioned earlier, of what you accomplished the last uh, two years, and um, it's uh, it's it's just awesome. It's just I get so happy when I see our, our students <laughs> get to this point. Uh, it's a bit sad for us uh, as well because you know we're not we've kept in contact in touch this whole time uh, but of course we are still gonna talk as well in the future but you know not as much but also we're excited for you guys because like I said this is a, the beginning of something amazing and um, I'm really yeah. excited for you so thank you so much for taking the time and doing this with us again and sharing your story I think it's going to inspire so many people um, and I really really enjoyed our conversation today thank you Andre. Thank you, Kenza. I appreciate it as always. Anytime you you want to you need you want to talk, uh, I'm here. Any way I can help. Awesome. Thank you.